Good morning. My name is A. Scott Talk. Welcome to our Fury Show. Shout out to everybody at MediaNet TV. Shout out to management. Shout out to all the listeners. Shout out to all the viewers watching. A. Scott Talk. Welcome to part two of Love Language. Yesterday, me and my guests, we started the dialogue on the language of love. And the narrative of the show was based around the fact that people could fall in love with each other and you know, be compatible on paper, you know, the usual tick boxes, financially compatible, you know, maybe culturally compatible, because that means something to some people. And you go through a tick list of all the things you want in your partner, but we never really state, stop and take time to examine, do we speak the same language when it comes to love? My guess yesterday, she was an inter, she's an international motivational speaker and female empowerer. I want to welcome to the show Yvonne Michelle. Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you so much, Ace. How are you today? It's good to see you. Good to see you as well, my darling. I'm absolutely, absolutely awesome this morning. And I want to thank you very much because yesterday the information that you shared with our viewers was absolutely amazing i've got so much feedback so much comments and we will be going through some of the feedbacks and comments shortly but before we get into today's topics because i know we've got three points that we never covered yesterday that we that's right will cover i was doing some reflecting on mm -hmm. what we discussed yesterday and the essence of what we're really putting out there is it's all about communication and yep. not just not just communicating, understanding that we all communicate differently. Yeah. So yeah. Just, just because you're communicating doesn't necessarily mean you're being heard. And when it comes to the language of love, which we will go into a little bit later on in the show, because mm -hmm. we, we speak different languages when it comes to love, we, yeah. we, we, we can often be in relationships where we're misunderstood. And I just want to give you a quick example of that. I was thinking about this all yesterday. I thought, I'm going to share this with, with our viewers, and then we're going to open up the conversation today. So I've actually got a friend of mine. I'm not going to name her. Yeah. But she was in a relationship. And, and for the viewers that didn't see yesterday's show, I shared with the, the listeners that I myself – split up from my, my partner, my ex-girlfriend, and it wasn't that anything major happened. It wasn't an incident like she did this or I did that. We, right. we, were, in a, we were in a very loving relationship for quite some time, but because we didn't necessarily communicate effectively with each other, we didn't communicate how we felt, and or when one of us did communicate how we felt, it wasn't reciprocated by the other one, that right. got to a point where it just brought the relationship to a dead end, so to speak. And, I, and that was quite painful for myself because I look back and I examine the relationship and I feel that if, if we understood each other's language when it came to how we communicated love and feelings, the relationship could have been salvaged. So I, yeah. shared, that, I shared that with the, the listeners yesterday and I wanted to just break that down before I started to tell you the story. And this is a true story about a friend of mine who, and it just came to me, I was sitting down just reflecting yesterday, and about two, three months ago, she came up to me, she said to me, Ace, she goes, I've been seeing this guy for some time, you know, and, you know, I'm thinking about leaving him. I said, she goes, I said, what, what's the situation? She goes, it was on holiday romance. They met on holiday in the Caribbean. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really exciting, you know, came back to London. That excitement continued, but then it kind of just fizzled out. They're still seeing each other, but the excitement's not there no more. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, I don't think he wants the same things out of life as me. I don't think he's taking this relationship seriously. You know, and I'm thinking about ending it. But what do you think as a guy? What's your perspective? She was telling me his behavior patterns and stuff. And I was quite honest with her. I said, sis, what I think you should do, I think you should talk to this guy. Communicate how you feel after you've communicated your feelings see his response his response will tell you everything you need to know so rather than make a decision express yourself first at least 
You've given him an opportunity to respond. And that was that. I saw the female friend a couple of weeks ago and it, it just came from, oh yeah, so what happened with Mr. Man? How's that going? She was like, oh, you know what? House on fire. I told him how I felt. They had a conversation. And after her expressing uh -huh. her, he then had the chance to see how she felt and responded. So before we go on, because today's conversation is, and I felt really satisfied and content that my advice was instrumental in actually salvaging a relationship that could have uh -huh. just have gone like that. So for me, I'm going to put it out there early. It's all about communication, but it, mm -hmm. you have to be mindful that the language you were communicating, because in that particular case, it, the, the language was reciprocated. They were both speaking the same language of love. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm going to go on to talk about today. Not always do couples speak the same language of love. They could be married for years and not necessarily speak the language of love. So I'll open up the show with that. Over to you, Sister Michelle. And I would like you to just start by just running through. Just tell us what. Tell us about the language of love. Tell us what the six, the six fundamental key points of language of love. We'll run over to three that we covered yesterday quickly, and then uh -huh. we'll start with. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, uh, just to carry on for, with what you were saying, it is crucial to a relationship for, for each party to know what the love language is. And some people find that out really quickly. And if they do, they go on to have long lasting relationships. If they don't, you normally find that the relationship will not work. So it is, it the love language is very very important it's a key to a successful relationship and that's not just a relationship within partners but that's relationships in general so if you know how somebody reacts or or receives um love then you can communicate at a higher level at a higher vibration so um yesterday we went through uh, the first three the first three languages of love and the first one is words of affirmation and so that is that person who is going to um, speak to that person in a loving way and say you know you're, you're great you're you're a good role model you you do this well you do that well and it's about encouragement and that person who's on the receiving end then understands that the person that they're with appreciates and loves them more because that's their love language that's what they want to receive so we have to remember that there are well, there are six there are six love i've got six up yet yeah, six uh, uh methods of love languages of love and so we we talk about number one being the words of affirmation two is gifts now this doesn't mean that the person is materialistic I have to make that clear. I thought about this yesterday and I thought I didn't actually say this. So I want to make it clear to the listeners that if somebody likes to receive gifts, it doesn't mean that they're materialistic or that they just want stuff. It just means that they feel appreciated if you buy them something or if you, you know, if you give them something. You know, some women, they love to receive flowers, you know, and it's randomly, it's random acts of love. OK, so this is we're not talking about birthdays. We're not talking about anniversaries. We're not talking about those moments. We're talking about random moments of affection. And so um, the second one is gifts. And so that person feels like if, you know, you, you, you see a little book or you see something that reminds you of your partner when you give them the gift and it could be something really small. It could actually be like, you know, um, uh, like a. Uh, like for me, I, I don't like cake. Let me just say, I don't like cake. I don't have a sweet tooth. However, I like black cake. And when I call talk about black cake, I mean cake with rum and and rum and 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 rum in it. Yeah, right? black fruit cake, right? So say for instance, like for the person that I'm with, they know that I like this. And just randomly, they just go and and have that baked for me. I'm not a baker. I don't bake cakes like that. And it's and it's something that I would do at a birthday, Christmas. I would do it on an in a random occasion. But the person comes and presents with the cake. That's not my love language. But if it was, I would appreciate that. Do you see what I'm saying? So it doesn't have to be something big like jewelry or anything like that. It's just the act of love. So giving a gift. And the third one, um, 
that we spoke about yesterday was acts of service. Now, for me, this one is a big one. And I kind of feel like I kind of fit into this one personally. So acts of service is, for me, it's a show me you love me. Show me you love me. Show me that you're thinking of me. So it's like you see that there's a struggle. You step in, you, you meet that need. That's what acts of service is, that person who provides the help, that sees that, you know, you're working or whatever. So by the time you come home, the dinner's on the table and it's a random thing. You, you know, for me, as I said yesterday, that is going to do it for me. I would love that to come home. Food's on the table, baths run. That person's thinking about me trying to make my life easier. So acts of service. So I want you to start thinking about what your own love language is. I think we set this task yesterday. What is your love language? Yeah, and so you can answer that in, give us feedback, let us know what your love language is. And then I want you to start thinking about your partner's love language. So if you are in a relationship, um, and I'm, you know, I'm not talking about booty call and unless you want that to go further into a proper relationship, you know, friends with benefits or whatever it is that you've got going on. I want you to start thinking about that person's love language and how you can communicate at a higher level and bring the vibration between the two of you to a higher capacity. Because once the vibration, once you're vibrating on the same level, your relationship is going to go far above and beyond what you could even imagine. So I want you to start thinking about what is your love language first and work that out and then work out what is your partner's love language. Okay. And then, um, then we'll work from there. So over to you, um, Ace. I can hear you. Absolutely beautiful. That was amazing, sister. Thank you very much. So I just want to shout out to all the viewers logged on and thanks for all the comments coming in. Shout out to Queenie, a regular viewer there, and shout out to Carol. So um, God bless you, sisters. Keep the comments coming in. Carol says, um, sorry, Queenie says, random gifts, nice. You know, and good morning to you, um, my sweetie Queenie there. So Sister, as you were talking, I was just, once again, Ace got talk. I'm a very open book. And sure. we talked yesterday about taking responsibility and, it's, yeah. and not pointing the finger in terms of the blame game. It's so easy when a relationship breaks down to quickly point the finger at the other person and look at what they did wrong and blame mm -hmm. them. And, you know, we both agreed that or for like-minded people like mine and yourself that is always developing and incarnating into a better version of themselves. We Absolutely. always take responsibility and look at, all well, what could I have done better? You know, mm -hmm. and just based on, I, I know we're not going to spend too much time on these gifts today because we've got another three to go through, but they, um, but go through that, like, you've got your affirmations, gifts and acts of service. Listening to you explain those out. I can interpret those into my own previous relationships and see where I went wrong as a man. Right. And I can honestly say as a man, you know, I love my woman in hair. Mm -hmm. I can't describe the love, but did I possibly do enough of like the, the gifting and the gesturing? No. Acts of service, a big one, a big area where Ace has, Ace has, Ace has been, Ace has been failing, you know, acts oh. of service. And you think, you know, like it hits you like a, like a slap in the face. Like, like you know, mm -hmm. it's, do you understand that? Like, because I sometimes do. in here you, you appreciate it, but initially yeah. outwardly showing that to the other person and giving them those, you know, affirmations and that, you know, cause we're all, human at the end of the day so to speak mm -hmm. so yeah it, it, it's, it's it's very interesting what, what what you what you say there so um that's um that's interesting i've I, i'm learning as as we speak you know so and this is the thing ace we evolve every day and as we are moving through life we're going to be learning. So we have to remember that this journey that we're on is a learning process. So because you were, you know, you didn't do that yesterday, don't mean to say you can't do it today, learn and move on. And the thing is, I always say we learn more from the mistakes that we make 
than the things that we, we've got down that we, we, we don't have any issues with, that we can do without even thinking. Because those things are just innate and we just go on, and we're not learning anything, but make a mistake and then assess that mistake. That's when you learn and you will never forget that lesson, never, because it came out of pain. All right, now, yeah. now, now, now here, here, how we, here, here I'm gonna mash it up. Here I'm gonna mash it up now. So uh, it's got talk. We're, go, we're gonna save someone's relationship today. You know, we're gonna save someone's marriage, yeah? Um, and I'm gonna do a little joke first. So when I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, I was speaking to one of my female friends, right? And I said yeah. to her, I said to her, this is funny, this is funny. Because we got I like to laugh at myself. I said, mm -hmm. I said to I said, you know, like I'm a motivational speaker. You know what I mean? You know, I'm out here saving the world and I can't even save my own relationship. And then the, <laughs> in fact, we're, we're we're both single, you know, we're both single. We are here to spy. We're inspiring millions of people, you know what I mean? And we can't even inspire. So I said that to yeah. one, of, one of my female friends. I said, you know, like, oh, how does that work? And she said, Ace, have you ever seen a painter and decorate his house? Thought, you, you ever been to a painter and decorator? They, they paint up everybody's house really nice, but you go yeah. in their house and it needs a lick of paint. You understand mm -hmm. where I'm coming from? Yeah. So, um, And it's funny how sometimes you can have the... The, the best advice for everybody else. But when it comes to applying that advice into your own life, mm -hmm. do you understand what so I'm saying? True. So like, true, so true, so true, so true. My friends then come around with all their, their female problems and, and my female friends come around with all their marriage and I've got advice for everybody. You know, I'll be sitting there giving the whole world advice, but yeah. there's still, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're all human in that respect, you know? Yeah. And um, I think the acts of services is, is, is an interesting one. But I just want to, like I said, I want to save someone's marriage today if we can help it. So check this one out. I gave you the analogy earlier of my female friend who wasn't sure where to go with the relationship she was in. And I advised her that she communicated that with her partner. She communicated it. And as a result of that, they're on the relationship is on good terms. Yeah. But there are a lot of people that because the language they've been speaking of love is different, they might have been communicating a message repetitively for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So that, feel, that message feels like a stuck record. Mm -hmm. It's called nagging. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Back in. Right. <laughs> Carry on, bro. Carry on, bro. Right. Well, right. well, what, 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 what advice would you give to those people that you know they they they're saying something and they feel that well I've said this so many times and you're just not listening, but it's actually a case of it's not the, it's not the message it's just the recipient it's not being received. Mm. in a way that you want it to be interpreted because obviously you want an action to be taken what would you say to yeah. those people what i say to those people is try and identify what the love language is first right try and um, try and determine what your partner's love language is first so you're having the issue, you're talking, it's not, it's fallen on deaf ears. So sit down with yourself, take some responsibility, sit back and look at the, the situation from a second point of view. So you're not in your own point of view, because if you're in your own point of view, you're only going to see yourself. So you need to come out of yourself and take a stand from your partner's point of view and think, what does he like or she like? What is their love language? And then try to see the issue from their perspective. When you see it from their perspective, then you can address and adapt your own behavior to behave in a way that suits them. Because you wanna be able to communicate at their level, not your level. And that's the thing. And this is not just about your partner. This is even your children. How many of us have got children? We're talking, 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 talking. And it's like, you're not hearing what I'm saying. But actually, the child is not hearing what you're saying because you're not talking in the language that they understand that will have an impact. It's not that they don't understand, but will have an impact to make them move in the direction that you want them to or to, to make them 
produce an action of how you want them to behave. So you have to like go as into the third person and look at that from a different perspective because when we are in that stage, we are only looking, when we are speaking those things or the partner saying, but I'm talking to you, you're not hearing me. You're talking to me and I'm, you're not hearing what I'm saying. You see, when we're in that nagging state, then you have to think, okay, what is she actually trying to say or he actually trying to say, what is their language? What is it that they actually want from me? And look at it from their perspective. If you can do that, then you are on the road to a healthy and loving relationship because relationships are give and take. It takes two to tango, baby. So we all have to do our part. So if your partner is um, a person, for instance, that's into two, uh, no, I'm not going to say that one because we haven't covered that one. It's words of affirmation, for instance. And you're asking that person to, to do stuff. And every time you ask them to do something for you, you don't say thank you. You don't appreciate, you know, you're not saying anything. You're just going along. To that person, you are the most ungrateful person on the earth. But if you realize that they, that is their language. Then when they are, when you are doing something, or when they're doing something for you, and you say, "Baby, thank you," you'll see a different reaction. Then you know that this is the way to to communicate with that partner because that's their love language. But if you don't say thank you, or it's just like, mm -hmm, "Yeah, it's nice," or you, you know, "Did you like that?" Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was all right. That person's just gonna think, "What's the point?" of me doing that you, you're so ungrateful you don't even appreciate but you've said it was all right but to them they need babes that was so good it was it was just what I needed you're amazing and I really love you for the fact that you do this or I love you for the fact that you do that because it's their language and what they need right so just think of it this way in all of it, because we're going to learn all of the love languages today, but just think of it this way. You are you are providing your partner with what they need. And in return, they will give you what you need. And if you start thinking about it in that level, on that kind of level, this person, I'm going to give them what they need. They're going to give me what I need. It's an exchange. It's an exchange. And once you get that exchange right, the vibration will start to raise. And you'll see how the person reacts to you in a completely different way. I Absolutely. hope that answers the question. Absolutely brilliant. There's so many comments coming in. And thanks to everybody that's coming. I am going to read them all out. So thanks. There's a lot of comments coming in thick and fast. But I just want to start off with a comment from Miss. And then we've got um, MIB22. She says, hi, I've been married for 34 years and it's true. Communication is key. I'm using myself today because I ain't going to lie. It broke my heart when my ex left me. Yeah? And she was trying to communicate certain messages to me for about a year that I never got. A whole year she was trying to tell me something and I never got it. And you know what? You know, women get to that point, they've had enough and they, they walk out the door. But when she walked out the door is when I got it. That's the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You never know what you've got. <laughs> typical, typical man, isn't it? Man. Typical man. Listen, and I even wrote that one on my wall as well. You know what I wrote on my wall? I wrote, you never you never miss the water to the well run well, dry. Run dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, so I, I know I'll be our hands up as a man that we could have a good thing. And we don't appreciate mm -hmm. what we've got. And we take mm -hmm. it for granted, you know. And you you ladies could be telling us certain little things and we're not really penny in it. And not a, not um not a, not all men are as fortunate that when that woman has that enough point and they and the man finally wakes up and go, Oh, I get what you were saying now. <laughs> they want <laughs> oh no, no, I can't <laughs> oh, what, what why you never just said sign at the first place? But she but, did. 
Uh, in her language. In her language. Right? And, but her this, language. This, but this is the dread part, right? because I told you about different languages. This is what her language was. Here's the dread part. Her language was bottling things up. Right. Her language was not communicating with me. And every time I picked up on a problem and I say, babes, you're all right. What's up? Let me tell you. I'm fine. Now, when mm -hmm. it up, she told me that the reason why she used to say she was fine is because she never wanted to put no more pressure on me. Mm -hmm. So my language is communicate, be open, be honest. Tell me what's mm -hmm. going on. I can fix it. And your language is I'm not going to tell you certain things because I don't want to put no more pressure on you. Do you see mm -hmm. how that? Yeah. And then what happens is, as a result of that, it builds up, 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 mm -hmm. up so you can't take no more, and then you broke. Right. Let me just come in there, because mm. what I want to say to you is this. When you are in or have been in that situation and it's per the person is clamming up, mm. we go back to, we have to go back to how, what the the in-depth love language is. So we, we've got the we've got the six love languages, right? And your partner is saying, I'm fine. But how does she, how do you get to the part where she really is fine? What is her love? What does she, how does she like you to interact with her to make her feel comfortable enough to be able to say X, Y, Z. That's it. You hit the nail on the head. And that's another failure. And I say as a man on our point of not understanding those things. You know, mm -hmm. but we like you said, there's fine and there's being so comfortable that you can be so just free with your man and talk to mm -hmm. your man, and tell your man anything else. And then you don't really think, wait, that like, I'm having deep in-depth conversations with beer females every day. But mm -hmm. I'm not having that depth conversation with my woman. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it goes yeah, back I do. to acts of service, number mm -hmm. three on the list, yeah? I realized that I was doing all those acts of service everywhere, but at home. Like, so it's right. just like hey, man, it's like your friends get the, be the best, the better version of you. You get me? Yeah. So yeah. it's once again, understanding, like you said, how do they like to communicate? How, how do they like to be communicated? That language? And what I realized for myself, it was about stopping back and taking time. No, do you know what? It was about being more considerate of the other person and not just putting yourself first all the time. Do you get what I'm saying? But it's mm -hmm. hard, once again, this is where we can get caught into that bad language. You know, like, there's some people that, use profanity and then there'll mm -hmm. be other people around them that because they're around them they use profanity so they're in that company there's just bad profanity sometimes yeah. relationships i feel you could start off with a bad language mm -hmm. and that bad language continues because example i was used to just being unapologetically me mm -hmm. and so girls are happy for you to take the limelight and just be unapologetically you so mm -hmm. there's that unbalance of your, do you understand that? Am I making sense? You're quite loud yeah. and they're happy to take that role. And mm -hmm. because they're happy for you to take the lead so much that you take the lead and almost forget. Leave them their, behind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm Because they're happy yeah. to be there. Yeah. You're my man. Yeah. You're your team. Me like I are flex. But they're mm -hmm. happy for you to do so that you forget so much about them that sometimes it can be just you. And there's that mm -hmm. balance again you know, of, Absolutely. It's creating harmony within your relationship. I try and stay away from the word balance because that means that it's it's here. If something's balanced, if you think of two scales, it's here. But sometimes in relationships and in life, it's like that a lot of the time. It, mm -hmm. the, the scales have to go up and down. So it's about creating the harmony that you can be like this. Mm -hmm. But just to go back to that statement, I'm fine. Um, what I have found, and, I, I, and I'm going to go into myself, that when I've been in relationships and I've been disgruntled and my partner said to me, um, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. It's actually because I'm not being myself. And I am f afraid to be or to show who I really am. And if most of us would really be honest with ourselves, that is a key issue. We want to please the person so much 
that we forget about one ourselves or what we want. And then we want to become this person that we think the other person wants us to be. And that's right. never, ever, ever what they want. Everybody, Brilliant. they just want us to be ourselves. Brilliant. Now, you, you have just dissected a previous relationship that I've had, and I use it as an example, right down to the pinnacle, the, the, the actual crux of what broke that relationship up. Exactly what you just said there, that I'm fine and not being yourself. You allow somebody else to be themselves so much, no. it then takes over who you are. And like you said, I don't want, I just want you to be you. Do you understand? And that is deep. That is deep. That is deep. We're gonna we're gonna wrap on because it's not all about ace, but I was gonna use myself as an example. I yes. know somebody out there that could actually there's probably some men out there that's looking for do you know what? You'll start consider a woman a bit more and it works both ways you know even yeah. in any relationship sometimes you know the man can be over pleasing to the woman and the woman mm -hmm. could not you know appreciate him as much you know yeah, yeah. absolutely you know? it absolutely works both ways absolutely this mm. is not gender specific no, you know no you no, know, it's, no it's not it's it's it can be anybody any person within that relationship and we want to start to give you some tools to bring that harmony within the relationships. And like I say, it's, you know, we're talking about partnerships here, but you, this love language can be used in all the language, all the relationships that you have in your life. So with parents, with siblings, with children, with your partner, it could, every, your colleagues at work, you know, it could give you more of an understanding of how that person approaches you. You know, and you kind of like think, OK, so let me this person likes it this way. So let me just do this. And you'll find that your relationships are a lot better, a lot healthier if you start to use these tools and tips. So um, no, no, definitely, sis, before you go on to point four, I just want to just breeze through some of the comments just real quickly yeah. um, for, from our guests. So we got Axel Service also um, yeah, can get lost in translation. Good advice, Yvonne. We all need to take time to understand each other and not just in a relationship. So it goes back to what you said about this love language can be put across the board into all different environments. Um, it's about understanding your partner. Love language will change as they they understand each other's language. That's so important. That's and so it's so important. And yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Medinet TV who says preach. Um, shout out to Queenie who says ace, you're... Um, but you're acting in your purpose. Your life can be um, mashed, but I don't, I didn't get that arm. Um, what happens when you really don't know what you have done and your partner refuses to let you know? Ooh, um, that's Ooh, okay. Do, do you want to answer that? Do you want to answer that one? <laughs> you, know, you know what? Uh, that, yeah. that is a whole different show. But let me just snip this, let me just snip this in, in, get this down quick. If your partner doesn't let you, let me just say this, and I and I don't want to disrespect anybody, but and I can only go from my own point of view, right, guys? So I'm just gonna say this. If you have a partner and that is not um able to tell you what is the issue, then you have to think about what is their love language to get the, if you have the time, the energy and and, and the conscience to do this, find the what is their language and work around it that way. But sometimes, and this is how I feel, if somebody refuses to tell you what you've done wrong, is either one of two things, you haven't actually done anything wrong and the issue is within them, two, that person is just very uh, not a nice person and doesn't. Mm, mm, let me take that to, that back. They no, might no, not. No, no. You know, truth, sometimes, sometimes people are just not nice people, and so they know that you need. It's a part of your love language that you need to know what the issue is. You need so that you can address it. But sometimes a person will withhold that because they want to hold you there in that space. They want to hold you there, keep you there. And it's a, not a nice place to be. So you have one of two choices. You can either go and look about it from their perspective as what's their love language and go around it and see if you can get the information out of there. Or you can look at it this way. If you don't want to tell me what the, the issue is, 
then I just have to leave it with you and put and then put the energy, that negative energy back on them and leave it with them until they decide that they can tell you what's wrong. But sometimes it's just a matter of they don't understand your love language. So they are unable to tell you in any way that it's going to give you any way that you will understand. Does that make sense? I want to make Absolutely. sure. That, so there are different different things. So you have to work out where you are in your relationship. Is it the fact that the person does this all the time? Right? Is this this person's way that they are they've just they shut down and they don't tell you is so and then what you have to find out is what what is the issue why they shut down. If you want this to work, then you have to start saying okay, let me sit back, let me not take this personally. And let me see what their love language is. And let me see if I can communicate in a different way to get the result that I want and I need. If that is not the case and you're hitting your head against the brick wall and the person shut down, doesn't talk to you and is ignoring you. And that attention is your love language. You need that. Then you have to start to say, OK, babes, do you know what? The fact that you're not talking to me is really difficult for me to understand it's difficult for me to move forward it's difficult for me to 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 get close to you and i want to get close to you so you may have to use all of the five life like love languages and we're going to come to those but you might have to start using the words of affirmation did it work did it work did he start to open up yes or no you can say okay i'm gonna try and get a little gift to do something nice for that person did that work? No. Or yes or no. Or you go to acts of service, right? I'm going to put myself out to help this person. Does it work? Yes or no. Then you, we're going on to the next three. You have to, if the person, if you are invested in that relationship and you are taking responsibility for yourself, then you may have to go through each one of the acts to see which one can get the person to open up. If you try all of them, this is what I'm going to say to you is that that person does not want to communicate with you. That person is not a very nice person. And we do mm -hmm. have people like that. And I've just got to be honest. I'm not going to say everybody's nice because they're not. It's just how we are as human beings. So there you go. So Brilliant. should we Sister. move on? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're not rushed off the vibe of car energy we are dealing with and our time, so it's not time, it's energy. But I just want to say quickly on the acts, and I just want to hit a few of the comments on on the on the social because there's so many, and I want to make sure we give the, the listeners the due the, the, the respect and co uh, answer their comments. I just want to say, just on the first three acts, I failed miserably on two of them, <laughs> and we ain't even got past the other six, so uh, but it's powerful when you say about actually looking at those acts and breaking them and going, well, how do I square up in this area? Like affirmations, I'm I'm very complimentary. You understand me? I'm very, mm -hmm. so I know tip, gifts, don't get me wrong. I've done my bit, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, like I said, act of services, I know that I could have done more. I was going to leave this to the end of the show, but I'm just going to drop this bombshell on the listeners because they've been so interactive and, and there's a good energy. I just want these guys to know myself and the, it's got to come a motivational speaker speaker and this beautiful young lady she's an yes. international motivational speaker and in power we've been um speaking offline but we're going to start a tv show so shout out to media net tv we're going to start a relationship tv show where, where it's going to be just like this where you guys can um interact with us on a weekly basis and we're going to have all different topics we was talking offline about um yes. sex sex toys uh what else <laughs> are we um threesomes yes you know, fetishes Fetishes. Fetishes. So we're, we're gonna go through the whole the whole list, yeah. Um, and we was even talking offline, sister, and you were saying that since this lockdown, the the set the increase in toy sales has gone through the roof, uh, right? Yeah. No, in, in fact, let me let me say how let me say how you said it. You was actually you was like this. She was like she's like she's like. You know what? It's I, I was gonna I was gonna invest in um the toy sales industry for a long time, you know. And since this lockdown, it's gone through the roof. I missed that boat. You know what I mean? Cause I'm put money out it right now. You know, you know? Real. I mean, people are sitting down in the yard board. And like you said, there's not everybody's not everybody's locked down with somebody. You know what I'm saying? No. So no. 
like I said, me and the sister, we're going to do a weekly show. We haven't even yeah. thought of a name yet. We're going to do a weekly relationship. We're going to go through it. Oh, I can't wait till we, we do the one about sex dolls. You know, you've got the sex dolls now. No, we got all of oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dollies, actual dollies, yeah, yeah. And then the real life dollies. So we're yeah. gonna do we got some interesting shows to um we might have right, we also might even get a dolly in the studio, right? <laughs> but anyway, we, we, we got a lot, yeah. we got we got work to yeah. do. Yeah, and those those dogs, just to say the sales of those toys for men have are on the increase, they have gone up by nearly 70 percent in the lockdown. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to do a joke right now. I'm tempted to do a joke. I'm going to do a joke. Uh, I was going to say, right, mate, the sales have gone up because the dollies don't answer back. <laughs> For real, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and they and don't I, say no either. And, and, and these affirmations, you don't need any of those anymore. Right? So, you don't talk back to you. <laughs> Kiss your right, right. We're, we're doing ourselves out of a job here. We might have to leave the we might have to leave the, the dollies one off the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. You bring the dollies into it. We don't need the, the, the six apps. Um, but just to go, sis, you can read out a couple of comments as well, you know. But I've well got it at um, I can't, I can't uh, see. Uh, I'm actually, I saw so, it as when they come up and then it okay, goes. Because, it's, um, it's, Christy, um, cosmetics says, Big up media net TV, um, big chat at a panel. Um, we got Carol who's who's laughing, um, earlier when you were talking about the nagging, yeah. Um, we got Queenie says, I think people may be getting through their self esteem issues as to why they themselves don't understand about love language. I'm, can I comment on that one? Yeah, go, go for it. I would say personally, self-esteem is, uh, there's, there's no one size fits all. And when we talk about relationships, it, there's so many variables. There's no fixed set of rules. And even right now, we're just talking about different variables and we're exploring different narratives, bit of philosophy going on. But in regards to, love language one of the things i've always said is it's all about experience as well and when i say experience this is where i'm coming from and i've done a little bit i've done a bit of a social this is to you queenie sweetie i'm just responding to this i've done a bit of a social experiment on this one and i've actually tested and measured and the results are quite shocking so here it goes i found that people and it's, you could just go and look, do this for yourself. A lot of people, and this is not a one size fits all, so I'm speaking broadly now, but I'm saying that people that I've witnessed this that grow up in households uh-huh. whereby they've witnessed a functional marriage, a happy functional marriage, where they've witnessed two parents happily yeah. in functional marriage. I've watched so many of their the relationships they go on to have. I've watched uh-huh. a lot of people that. Your parents are married and they're happily married and, they, and they've watched. And then, but people, and I come from a, what they call, my mother hated this term when we was growing up, but they call it a broken home. Yeah, my mom hated that like when the teachers yeah. and I said, at school, you come from a broken home. Broken but I, come home. From, I come from a single parent family. I come from a, I come from a, a background where my, my dad wasn't around and my mum raised three kids by herself. And I've also looked, because I just looked at a lot of people that come from those environments and the type of relationships they go on to have. Mm-hmm. And then the type of how how quickly those relationships go. Basically, you you see history repeating itself. Mm-hmm. History yep. repeating. And once again, there's so much variables that. But what I'm saying is, one of the things that I've identified is that monkey see, monkey do. If you don't mm-hmm. know no better, if you don't know no better, and you've never been educated. Pi, yeah. it's on the wall behind me, and it's also on my arm. You control the diameter of a man's knowledge. You control the circumference of his thinking. And I just want to mm-hmm. go on for one more point out there, Queenie, on this one. Don't shoot the messenger, but it's a, it's a, once again an observation, and I've got a lot of experience in this field. But I also noticed that, and don't shoot the messenger. I'm just throwing something into the pot. It's just an opinion. It doesn't have to be correct. It's just my observation. Yeah noticed that a lot of women not all women but there's a there is a well, I see her, your eyebrows are raising her eyes like, <laughs> oh, okay let's go yeah so you address me on this one sister you tell <laughs> yeah, me if I'm right or wrong right here okay. um, not all women but some women that have been raised by single parents 
and their mums have taught them, I raised you by myself. I didn't need no man to raise you. They then have a, I don't need no man to raise my kids' attitudes. Uh -huh. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Uh -huh. So there's a lot going on in terms of re repeat, repeat cycles of behavior. So I think I'm just saying to Queenie, it's more than just self-esteem. I think a lot of it is to do with the hard wiring due to your upbringing. But would you, what is your response to the last one about that single mum attitude? Because I know a lot of women that raise their kids and I raised you, I don't need no man. And I've watched those women go on to have the same attitude with their men and actually diss their baby fathers because my mum never had no man, I don't need no man. And that is that kind of, would you, what's your opinion? My opinion on that, on this subject is this. We are not our behaviour we are our environment at the end of the day your environment is what is grounding you is what's feeding you is what's nurturing you is what's teaching you about how to live first and foremost we have to get that and and that's actually been proven you are not your environment children are not their they're not their behavior they are their environment first and then in their environment they then create the behavior. So what you're saying is true. It is very, very true. What we have to do is this, is that as I, I grew up in a single parent home, my mother died when I was 11 and my dad um, was there, but wasn't present. So but really and truly I raised myself and my younger brother, if I'm honest, um, after my mother died. Okay. And then I am, I, I have, I'm a single parent. I have three children. Um, but the thing is, is, we have to be careful what environment we have for our children, because what you're saying, Ace, is true, that there are women who have struggled and who have provided homes for their children and have done a bloody good job at it, too. Let me just say that, of, of actually keeping their children and raising them with very little to no help from the fathers. And I'm going to talk on those, that situation right there. So we as women have to be mindful that especially when we're raising our daughters, much less our sons, of the language that we speak. This is why I'm saying the love language is very important in every relationship, because we have to remember that the world works better when it works in love. If it works in anything other than love, it brings pain. It brings unhappiness, uncertainty, and negativity. See, all those words that I've just said, they're all quite negative words. So you raise a child and then your daughter comes up and says, I don't need a man. Actually, we all need each other. You may not need the man to, to, to provide for you in, 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 in a certain way, but let me tell you this, two is better than one. Two wages is better than one. Two people helping each other in a house is better than one. Because when you've got to do everything, when you've got to get up, get the children ready for school, go to work, come home, cook, clean, wash, iron, go out in the garden, do the gardening, um, the shelf broke down, you've got to get the, the, the drill out, you've got to do it. All of that, you become tired. And when you're tired, that's when resentment comes in. And that's when this starts working and it starts saying things in front of the children. So the language that the children are in, which is their environment, becomes negative. And so then they grow up with the same pattern as the mother. So we as single parents, whether we're male or whether we're female, we have to understand all the love languages and we have to understand that what we say here death and life comes out of here so if you want your children to prosper if you want your children to do well if your children if you want your children to have a, a life that has harmony in it then you have to have harmony you have to start living differently start thinking differently and start behaving differently in order to create the change on a wider level remember when you throw a stone in the water, there's a ripple effect. So what is that stone that you're throwing out that's creating that ripple? What Brilliant. is it? Ask yourself that question. Brilliant. And I hope that answered your question. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And the vibrations and the knowledge that we're just running is absolutely flowing. You know, every time we start talk, yeah, the little hour just disappear upon us. But I saw, I saw it go because do you know what? I'm not even concerned with that. It, that means that the, 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 the information we're putting out is of value. 
You know, yeah. when you when when you're talking and you can't say enough in an hour, it values coming out. You know, when yeah. I'm talking and I'm looking for it's only half an hour, boy, I've got another 25 minutes. You know, you understand? You're, you're looking, yeah. you're looking for something to yeah. keep it going, but that ain't the case there, so I ain't gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna breeze through these comments quickly because I want to make sure we get them through. Shout out to Kushki Cosmetics that says, so I mean I buy my yes, I um I've got what's it called? Um Wait, 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 wait. Eyebrow, the eyebrow. The, yeah. the vision, um, short, short sighted, a short sighted, so I screen top my eye. But shout out to um, Kushti Cosmetics, who says, um, truth, different spirits, personalities. Shout out to um, Lani, who says, very true regarding affirmations. Um, shout out to Kush Cosmetics, who says, ooh, this is a great topic. Um, Queenie says, affirmations. Queenie says, Ace, thank you for your honesty. That's probably in regards to me sharing a bit about my previous relationship. I'm an open book. I wear my heart on my sleeve and I have no shame. I.e., the more honest you can be with yourself is the more growth you can allow for yourself. So you need to, and I, Ace got talk. I'll say it again. The more honest you can be with yourself is the more you can allow yourself to grow. You know, um, there's an old Chinese proverb. It says, rather be a fool for five seconds than the rest of my life. Mm. You know, so it's like sometimes some people will hear something but don't want to ask the question. It's, it's nothing more to say, what, what do you mean by that? Because now you know. You know, you, you now learn. Even me being honest in these five seconds with you, I've learned so much that I can take with me. So, yeah, um, I'm happy to be honest and open. Um, Kush says, I agree. His honesty is appreciated. Oh, thank you very much, Absolutely. sweetie. Thank you very, thank you very much. Um, Carol says, oh, went a bit too fast. Oh, I just want to get a few more of them out. Um, Carol says, but it goes both ways. A man might have a problem in his in his partner receiving that communication. Definitely, everything we're talking about goes both ways. Even right. though we might use a man, woman, or woman, man, it definitely goes both ways. Um, I'm fine, it's not enough. And as you said, you knew she wasn't. Take the time to move the communication forward slowly. I'm fine. Oh, that's in regards to, you know what people say? I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. Right, there, yeah, there. Yeah. Um, Social influencer, uh, yes, Yvonne. So, Queenie says your social. So, I'm just wrapping, I'm reading the comments. I think I've covered most of the main ones. Um, the environment becomes toxic and not healthy for the children, and it's another mental breakdown for the children. So, you've read that. And a shout out to Kelly, just um, logged in. So, guys, once again, right, once again, right, the hour has gone by so quickly, and we it haven't has. even come. We have three more points to go through. Are you available tomorrow, young lady? <laughs> What's tomorrow? What what Friday. day are we on today? I think we're on Thursday um, today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Friday. Yeah. Let, Friday let, is good. Friday let, is let's good. finish this off tomorrow. Right. And tomorrow, like we done my little intro. It's a nice little section. Tomorrow we'll come straight out with point number four. Do you want to just yeah. give them a, a wet their appetite and just tell them the title of point number four? It's up to you. The title of number four is quality time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bra, fire, bra, bra. fire! And even <laughs> that, we won't even get into that. Means different things to different people. People, you understand me? oh I yes, it me. does. Yes, so, yes, so yes. tomorrow, a Scott talk and the Royal Empress Yvonne Michelle MediaNet TV our free show, eleven a.m. sharp, part three on the love languages or the language of love. We're going to run through the last free affirmations and we're going to call that a wrap and just for those we'll say once again escort talk and yvonne michelle we are going to start with media net tv a live talk show where you guys can yeah. phone in and interact digitally and we're black we're going to cover every our topics everything and if, oh and if there's any yeah. topics you want us to cover That's or if there's it. anything Come you on. want us to talk about put the comments in the feedback say ace if, Mich if one Michelle wanted to cover this topic, that topic, what do you think about this? You got any questions for us? Ask us your questions. This is this is this is it's interactive. Just the same affiliate show principle. This is for you guys. It's about starting that dialogue and, ha and having those awkward, uncomfortable conversations. You know, and there is no right or wrong. You know, they just put we just put it out there and we have a conversation about it. You know, in a in a very respectful manner. Yvonne, do you want to do you want to summarize and um say um just tell us say something for the listeners? Well, I just want to thank you all for listening and thank you for taking part and you know just really just being really interactive 
in this show. I'm really, really excited about the future and what this can do, not only because, you know, I'm here and I'm giving out advice, but because of you and your relationships that you are in, you know, because now's the time when people are self-isolating with, within their families. And so it can become a challenge being at home all the time. So I think this uh, series of love language is right on time to give people those extra tools so that they can get on better and we can save some relationships. So tell your friends about it, spread the word. We need you to share, share, share and get as many people watching this as possible and i just want to say i'm sending love and light to you all and you can find me on all social media i run uh groups for women um online right now uh, to help with personal development um speaking whatever i've got a, a cooking program coming up at four o'clock this evening so um and that's with a live chef live and direct and you can actually come in the zoom room and cook at the same time learn new skills so if you if you're interested in that find me on um social media actually email me info at yvonne .com. that's info at yvonne y-v-o-n-n-e michelle m-i-c-h-e-l-e dot com just email me and i will send out the details to you brilliant 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 i'm going to keep it nice and short short and sweet on the intro today i'm just going to say it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And if Absolutely. you want to walk a thousand miles, it starts with a single step. Guys, you've been a fantastic audience. Thanks for all the comments coming out. I can still, still, I was going to ask that. I was going to tell you, what, what's cooking good looking? Yvonne, we've got two minutes left. What, what's, what are you cooking today? Um, the, the chef is cooking uh, prawns with a broccoli meal because it's about keeping healthy as well. A lot of people have been complaining that they're putting on weight. So it's he's the inspired diabetic. He turned uh, around 105 guy. days. Yeah, Lindsay yeah. Wissart. 105 yeah. days, he turned yeah. it around. Um, join in, watch, get involved. It's going to be amazing. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So, just um, quickly, guys, Lyndon, what's that? A good, very good friend of mine. He goes by, um, he's the inspired diabetic. He got type 2 diabetes and he, he turned it around in 105 days just by changing his diet, you know. So, yeah, um, we're going to get him on the H H uh, a foodie show soon, but yeah, until tomorrow, guys, join us back tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m., Media Net TV, a foodie show. Part three, love languages. I'll see you then. Salut.